in Bearcats. This is 9.1 sequences and series. The first thing I want us to do is identify the difference between these two words. All right, a sequence would be really a list. Okay, so it's a list that's generated from some sort of mathematical formula in this case. A series would be the sum or the total of the list or part of the list. So a sum or total of the list or part of the list. And that's just pretty simplistic. There's a little bit more mathematical terms for that. And we're going to explore that. We have two different types of sequences. I just want to come down here and make sure that we understand this is about sequences, and that's what I'm going to mainly address tonight are sequences, and then tomorrow night we'll talk about series. Um, there are two types of sequence. We have infinite and we have finite. Um, I want to go ahead and let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, difference between the infinite and the finite. Just as the words would mean, um, if something is infinite, the list would continue. Um, so it's something where the list would continue. and In other words, that the domain would be a set of integers um, that would have an output of an infinite amount. The list would continue. So it's a uh, list... Um, and it would eventually, uh, there would be a limit would be uh, one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit later. Something that is finite would be a certain number, a list that would contain just a certain number. So the, the domain consisted of five, um, the five possible integers or the four possible integers. So it's a list with a restriction basically. Spell with a restricted domain. Okay? So it's a list with a restricted domain. And in infinite, the domain is not restricted. It has to be positive integers. Doesn't mean that the output is always positive, but the integers are positive, that the input, the domain itself is positive. Um, and both are, are have to do with positive integers. So the domain. That's D for domain, R, positive integers. Okay? All right, let's move on and let's just keep talking a little bit more about sequences. In a sequence, in the past when we've written a function, our notation has been F of N, let's say, or F of X. In a sequence, we write the notation is, this is a notation for a function, and for a sequence the notation is A sub n, and that's our notation for a sequence. All right, so let's take a look at example one. Example one is going to be we're going to write the first four terms of the following sequence. All right. So, example A is going to be A sub n equals 2n plus 5. So n, just like in f sub n, you could substitute in a value for x, let's so to say, that you would substitute into your formula. This really is the term number. This is the term number. So I, I don't want you to get, um, get that, that confused. This represents the term number. So a sub 1 are the first term. Then 1 would be our substitution for n. And so we would have 2 times 1 plus 5, which would be 7. So a sub 1 is 7. a sub 2 would be our second term, and we would have 2 times 2 plus 5, which would give us 9. 
and we would go on and get a sub 3 would equal 11 and a sub 4 would equal 13, etc. And that's the first four terms. That's if a sub 1 started with um, the first term being 1. Sometimes you can have a sub 0, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's take another look at another example. Let's look at b. And again, we're going to have the first four terms, and we have b sub n. So the n represents the term number, and we have the equation 3 raised to the n minus 1 power. So b sub 1 would be 3, and it's raised to the 1 minus 1 power. Okay, well, 1 minus 1 would be equal 3 to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So b sub 1 is 1. b sub 2 would be 3 to the 2 minus 1 power, which would be 3 to the first, which would be 3. And then we would continue with b sub 3 and do the substitution and get 9, and b sub 4, get the substitution and get 27. Okay, you may want to stop for a minute, make sure you have these examples written down, uh, and make sure that you're kind of understanding that. So you could go ahead and pause, I'll be right here waiting for you. Alright, next I want to talk a little bit about factorial notation. Um, I'm not sure the last time you saw this notation. Um, Maybe geometry, but I'm guessing way back in middle school somewhere when we talked about factorial. I'm going to show you the notation. It's a letter N with an exclamation point, and that's a factorial notation. Um, here's the form, um, our equation for factorials. You would have N factorial is equivalent to N times N minus 1 times N minus 2, dot, 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 dot. 2 times 1. And we'll, we'll substitute this in. A couple of things that are important that n is a positive integer. And we have one special case that we have 0 factorial, and 0 factorial is equal to 1. Sort of like the reverse that anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay, well, 0 factorial is also 1. Uh, there is a difference between these. I just want to make a notation here. If you had 2 in factorial versus you had 2 in, in parentheses, factorial. Um, at this point, only the n would be factorial, would, would follow this rule above here. In this case, the whole thing would follow the rule. And you would have to uh, then multiply your factorial each time by 2. So I just kind of want to make that difference. Okay, again, you want to make sure you have this written down. Okay, well, let's take a look here at example two. Um, here's our formula, and we're going to be we're being asked here to write the first four terms. And again, we're going to use our factorial. So a sub one would be the first term, and we would plug a one in. So we would have one squared over one factorial. Well, one squared is one. One factorial would be one times. 1, so that would just be 1, and so 1 over 1 is 1, and that would be your answer. Let's look at a sub 2. We would have 2 squared over 2 factorial. 2 squared is 4, and 2 factorial would be 2 times 1, which is 2. So we would have 4 over 2, which is 2. All right, now we have a sub 3. We would have 3 squared over 3 factorial. 3 squared is 9. 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So we have 9 over 6, which reduces to 3 halves. That would be our output. And then a sub 4 would be 4 squared and 4 factorial, which 4 squared would be 16. And it would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 which would equal 24, so we'd have 16 over 24, which would reduce to 2 thirds. And that would be our fourth term. All right, let's go ahead. Now we're going to learn to evaluate a factorial expression. All right, in this example, we're going to evaluate a factorial expression. So here's the expression given to us. This is example A. Would be 10 factorial over 2 factorial times 8 factorial. Here's what you're going to do. We know 10 factorial. Let's go to the, the smallest number first, the 2. So we're going to go 2 times 1. And then we're going to go times 8 
times, and we would go seven, six, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to show you why I'm stopping. At the top, we would have 10 times 9 times 8, and then it would go times 7 times 6, da, 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 da. All right, you can make a cancellation here. The 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 would cancel. The 7 would cancel. The 8 would cancel. So all of this would cancel out. 